If you have been kidnapped for almost a decade since you were a child, what would you feel? How do you get back into normal life? This is the case of Fusaku Sano, a case of a missing child that spent nine years in Japan's small town. Hi, my name is Caesar, and welcome back to Caesar Talks, a channel for you who loves mysteries and criminal cases. Without further ado, grab a coffee, relax, and sit back. Here's the story of Fusaku Sano. The victim, Fusaku Sano, was a nine-year-old girl who lived in a small area of Japan called Sanjo City in Niigata Prefecture. Niigata is located north of Tokyo, borders Fukushima. Sanjo City itself would be described by most as an idyllic small town, surrounded by forests, mountains, and close to the coast of the Sea of Japan. And unfortunately, its proximity to the north coast of Japan had misled people into believing conspiracies as one of the reasons Fusaku was missing. On 13 November 1990, Fusaku had just finished watching a baseball game in her school, and as she had done many times, she walked back home. Nothing was out of the ordinary, and yet, at the same time, another man was driving a car around Sancho City. Nobuyuki Sato was circling the neighborhood without any particular reason. The man was a loner, and ever since his dad passed in 1989, he became much more of a recluse. He's unpredictable, to say the least. He might explode with anger in one minute, and yet he would cry at the other. He was not able to comprehend his own feelings. He would even abuse her elderly mother at some point without any apparent reason. His mom would be his only friend, and they live in a house in a neighboring town of Kashiwasaki. Suddenly, his gaze was fixated on Fusako. The nine-year-old girl was strolling by herself on a quiet, empty road. A strange thought crosses Nobuyuki's mind. He stopped his car, glanced at his surroundings, and decided right there and then to abduct Fusako Sano. It happened in less than a minute on a quiet small town road. No one could have helped her, no one could have known, and that would be the beginning of Fusako's nine years of nightmare. The car sped off to Nobuyuki's house in the neighboring town of Kashiwasaki, a mere 50 kilometers from Fusako's house. Several hours have passed since Fusako's abduction before her family decided to look for her whereabouts. All of her friends were contacted, and most agree that they last saw her walking back home after the baseball game that late afternoon. Fusako's family was panicking, and eventually the police were called. The police promptly investigated all the leads to no avail. Sanjo is a relatively small town, and serious crimes do not appear very often. No ransom notes was ever given to the family, not even a single phone call. Even if there was a demand, the Fusaro family was not that well off. This was not your typical kidnapping case, and there was no lead to speak of. And investigations even veered off to conspiracies involving North Korea. From 1977 to 1983, there have been strings of the kidnappings of Japanese nationals by North Korean spies. The victims range from teens to adults. A total of 17 people were reported missing during that period. They were either forced to teach Japanese language and culture or became North Korean spies themselves. One such case even occurred to a 13-year-old girl Megumi Yokota in 1977. She was also missing when she was walking to her home in a village in Niigata, the same as Fusako. The police and the media then thought that it was plausible that Fusako might have experienced the same thing Megumi did, dragged by a small boat across the Sea of Japan straight to North Korea. Such high-level conspiracies rocked the Japanese media for a moment. But, unbeknownst to the police, Fusako was nearby. 
she was a mere 50 minutes away from her house in Sanjo City. Fusako was smuggled to Nobuki's house in Kajiwasaki. She was carried to the second floor and was tied and gagged for some time. Nobuyuki was careful not to make her mother aware of the existence of a nine-year-old girl living on the second floor of the house. And Fusako was thoroughly intimidated throughout her time there with a constant threat of her demise if she made any noise that alerted his mother downstairs. Fusako was pretty much confined to the room and was only allowed to go outside whenever she needed a toilet, maybe a shower every now and then when the mother was not around. She was fed three times a day with convenience store food most of the time. Her movement was heavily restricted for the first few months. But slowly, Nobuyuki somewhat began to trust Fusako. He would untie her hands and instructed her to record horse racing shows on the radio. And when she forgot to do so, he would electrocute Fusako with a stun gun. Yes, she was shocked with a stun gun. The abuse continued for a long while, whether it was by punches or even threats with knives. Her will to escape crumbled soon enough. She didn't dare to oppose Nobuyuki. Her hair was cut short and she was told to wear Nobuyuki's old clothes. After some time, the room was not even locked anymore. She would spend her days in front of the radio most of the time, not even attempting to contact Nobuyuki's mom downstairs. After a couple of years of her abduction, there was a time when the mother tried to go to Nobuyuki's bedroom, but he warded her off and exploded with anger. Ever since that day, the mother would not dare to disturb his room again. Nobuyuki's secret was safe for a while. Years passed and Fusako's family finally gave up on her daughter's disappearance. The police had not found any new lead to her whereabouts. But in January 1996, something happened. Nobuyuki's mother called the local clinic. She conveyed her worries, her fear towards her son's erratic behaviors to the clinic. Nothing much was done, but she eventually called the clinic again on 12th of January 2000. She feared that her son had gotten even worse, and on the last ditch effort, she finally called the clinic back on 28th of January 2000 to ask them to come and see her son personally to check up on him physically. The physicians visited her house and went straight to the second floor and to their surprise, they found Fusako sitting in the corner. She was 19 years old by then and she told them her story, how she was abducted more than nine years ago. How the man grabbed her and shoved her into the car. The police were promptly called and she was finally free. Her condition was not great. Because of her confinement, she was pale. Lack of sunlight gave her a sickly yellow hue. She was dehydrated and she was barely able to walk. The doctors believed she was suffering from PTSD. She confessed to the police that by then she had lost her will to fight and had accepted her fate. She just couldn't muster the courage to escape Nobuyuki's unlocked room. She was shortly returned to her home in Sanjo City. Her parents didn't recognize their little girl anymore. Nine years has made her unrecognizable, but slowly her condition became better, physically and mentally. She helped her parents with their farm. She's taken a liking to photography. She even got her driving license, but her trauma did not just disappear. She distanced herself from others and hardly had any friends. She would still behave like a child at times. But what happened to Nobuyuki? He was released from the psychiatric hospital on 11 February 2000 and immediately apprehended by the police to be put on trial on 23rd of May 2000. The police tried to at every little thing they could. These would even include theft of women's underwear. 
This was done because kidnapping in Japan has a maximum penalty of just 15 years and the public at large didn't like that. Ultimately, after a few trials throughout the years, Nobuyuki received a 14 years jail sentence. He was judged to be mentally fit to serve his full sentence. There was no concrete motive for her kidnapping that was ever mentioned. But it was theorized that the reason might be because Nobuyuki wanted to make Fusako his friend. This case rocked the Japanese media for a while. The Japanese police were criticized for forgetting the fact that Nobuyuki was charged for attacking a girl back in 1989, a year before Fusako was kidnapped. His name was deleted from the criminal database. These made his name disappear from the police radar back in 1990s, when Fusako first went missing. Two of Nikara's police heads resigned shortly afterward when the media found out that they were playing mahjong when Fusako was first discovered. Their ignorance of the case annoyed the public. Unfortunately, another tragedy struck Fusako once more in 2007, when she was hanging by the pool with her father. The father slipped and drowned in front of Fusako. Thanks for watching this video by Caesar Talks today. What do you think about the case of Fusako? What would you have done if you're in a place? Please share your thoughts down below. Thank you again for watching Caesar Talks. And as always, I'll be right here waiting for you for the next one. Until next time, goodbye.